Turn in your Bibles with me to 1 Peter. If you're physically able to do it, can I ask you to stand as we read? We're specifically looking in chapter 2 right now, going to start at verse 13 and then work our way through verse 7 of chapter 3. Follow along with me. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For for to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husbands, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be one without a word, by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair, the wearing of gold, or the putting on of clothing. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves, by submitting to their husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. And you are her children, if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Please take your seats. Now, these, these precious believers who, who have been scattered out of their homeland in all different areas of Asia Minor. Not only are some of them learning how to be believers, but they're also learning how to conduct themselves with different parts of society. And I felt that it was important that they know these things. Remember remember who they're... They're under the emperor, Nero, crazy guy, wicked as all get out. 
And sometimes we think we have it bad now. So my point is that they are to subject themselves to government, civil authority, and then I went to slaves and masters. They are to subject themselves, to be submissive to their masters, not only the good ones, but the bad ones too. And then for wives to be subjective, submissive to their husbands. Now, for, for this point here, what we went through the last two weeks, many of, many of these husbands could in fact be unsaved. Well, it's better that they be won over for Christ by how the woman ha- has a gentle and quiet spirit instead of one that just nags constantly. And then many of the husbands would say, yes. <laughs> I, what what I tell you? <laughs> one. One had the guts. <laughs> yeah, he's a newbie, right? <laughs> now, did you even think for one moment that I would forget about the husbands? No. No. And in one verse here, in one verse, there are three important things here that we need to learn. But also, let me take this to another point. This is also can be applied for how we not only communicate within the home, but with others who are not like us. Isn't it easy? Isn't it easy for each and every one of us to communicate with somebody who is not like you? Right? That's real easy, right? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. So, here we go. In chapter 3, verse 7. And let me be clear about this. There are three there are three commands here in, in, this, in this one verse. And I'm still teaching about how to be subject to, how to be submissive to, to the different areas within our lives. A Christian wife and her responsibilities, we're still talking about togetherness. In order for government to function correctly, everybody has to be doing their part. Leaders have to lead. Followers have to follow. In order for there to be proper rank and proper order, in order for there to be togetherness, whether it's in the government, whether it's in the workplace, or whether it's in the home, everyone, everyone needs to be in order and together in order for God to be glorified. If the followers in society rebel, what happens to society? Blows up. If slaves rebel against their masters, what happens in that context blows up. If wives are not properly subject to their husbands, what happens within the home blows up. Ah, but if a husband is not subject to his wife, what happens? The home blows up. Notice the first word in this verse. Likewise. Same word. Likewise as the wives are be, are to be subject to their husbands, likewise husbands are to be subject to their wives. Let's see. 
The principles applied in this context here of how we learn to communicate. We're all different. God, God, God has wired. God has created men and women differently. Amen? Amen. Now, now, some of you said amen. Some of you said amen. So here we go. As these original readers are living through their suffering, let's see what the keys are for making the effort to communicate with others who are not like you. Well, well, the first thing on your notes there is be a learner. Be a learner. The first part of that verse says, likewise, now remember, that's a key word there, likewise. This goes without saying, everything that I have written there, this falls into the same category of being subject to, being submissive to. Likewise, husbands live which means to intimately dwell with your wives in an understanding way, which means having knowledge, intelligence, not being ignorant. As my father taught me when I was young to be a fisherman, he would would always ask me questions about things that he had taught me. It could have been from the day before. It could have been from two days back, three days, five days, seven days. It could be from a year back. But my father, teaching me how to fish, would always ask me questions to see if I had learned what I was supposed to learn and retain that knowledge. And he would see to it that I had learned it. When the scripture says here, likewise, husbands live, and the word means intimately, not only physically, but spiritually. This cannot happen if the husband is always gone. This cannot happen if the husband is always at work. It cannot happen. And in order for us to minister to others who we, who are different from us, it takes time. It takes time to learn these things. A man has to live with his wife as a learner, not being closed-minded, but purposing to learn. We all need to be learners in order for the home to be together. In order for the husband and wife to be together and walk in togetherness, it needs to be done on an intimate, spiritual, and physical basis, knowing each other. He needs to be a learner. Many of you have probably been married for a long time. Is there at least something that you learn still that is new to you about your spouse? Yes, sure. And newbies are learning all the time. (laughs) They are. But one thing, the world says you can't understand a woman. No one's got the guts to say amen. But one thing in 1 Corinthians 13.4 that teaches us is that love is patient and kind and it does not envy or boast and is not arrogant. This is something that takes time and study, especially time. The most important part of acquiring knowledge is communication. If nothing gets talked about, nothing gets solved. If nothing is talked about, nothing comes to be known. And what it takes is asking questions, finding out what needs are, learning likes and dislikes. Remember this, in order for society, in order for society, society to be strong, everyone, everyone needs to fulfill their biblical roles. We just heard prayers for this country.
You want to know why Israel split into two kingdoms? Everybody, every, everybody thought they knew better than everybody else. You want to know why your country is going belly up? Is because everybody thinks they know better than everybody else, and 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 everybody, not everybody, but m- many people have forsaken their biblical roles. That's why. I I, I watch this. I I hear about this stuff and uh, how how the government is arguing back and forth, back and forth about money and what to do with this money and what to do with that money. And they all think they have the answer. You know what? None of them do. God's got the only answer. You know what God said? Don't go into debt. Case closed. It has to start somewhere. In order for society to survive, it has to start somewhere, and it needs to be in the home. When it's not happening in the home, society will suffer. And who has the main, let, here, let me just corner you right now. And who has the main responsibility? The husband. The husband does. The man within the home has the main responsibility. If it ain't happening, let me tell you. Oh, I gotta quit talking like this. <laughs> Talk like Peter. <laughs> If it is not happening like that, society will eventually burn up. So husbands, prospective husbands, it's up to you. The world says you can't understand a woman, but yes, you can. When you take the time to do it, and many of you have friends, many of you could be working with people who are different from you. Can you take the time to get to know them, even though they are different from you? Yes, they could. It is not race that separates people. It is it is social class. Right? Look what look what I had to deal with. Jews, Samaritans, same thing. Same thing in 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 the world you live in. Are are you not confronted in your life with people who are not like you every day? Yes, you are. And from what your very handsome and humble pastor tells me. Many of you flock to the food pantry to get to know these people. Boy, it got real quiet. Second thing, accept them as they are. Showing honor, which is to value, to the woman as the weaker, and as in form, physical form, as the weaker vessel. I am not saying in any way that a wife or any woman is inferior to her husband or any man. Let me say that loud and clear to all the chauvinists here. <laughs> the point is here is that the husband is to value her So much and to protect her from any harm, provide for her needs, be the leader, not a dictator, but an an, an encourager, and oversee the family. God made man and woman physically and emotionally different. Yes? Yes. And by knowing that person, we can serve them better. And even those who you know that God has put in your life who are different from you, knowing, getting to know that person helps us to serve them better. It does. Why? Because everyone, especially a wife, is of great value and worth to God. Romans 15:7 says, "Therefore welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God." 
A woman is so precious that she is to be valued as something that is just what God made it. Because in God's eyes, she is. We do this by having the right heart attitude in serving them. And, and this goes without saying about the different people God brings into our life. And, and you know what? You know, it just, it just, it, it, and I was the same way. I was the same way. And once I came to faith in, in, in Christ and I finally recognized who he really was, I would be so much like the Pharisees who would just look at people who were not like them. They thought they were these, these, these religious elites. And everybody else was just nothing. Have you ever acted that way? I, I, I did it. I did it. In fact, when I, when I first started learning, I would pass up any kind of ministry to the Gentiles and just stick with the Jews. And boy, didn't God take care of that. Accept them as they are. The third thing there, treat them as an equal. Since they are heirs, which means equal participants with you in the grace of life. Husbands are to honor their wives in such a way as being their equal. Why? Because they are. He is not to dominate her. He is not to be a tyrant, but someone who is gentle, loving, and kind. Why? Because no one has their own spiritual pedestal. Galatians 3.28 says, There is neither Jew nor Greek, There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Do you know that there are some? Do you know there are some people who think they are spiritually superior to other people? There was back in my day, and there are now. Do you know in the wickedness of your heart, if you are sitting here today as somebody who has accepted that free gift of salvation by placing your faith in Jesus Christ in the wickedness of your heart, you are no better than the pagan that, that walks down the street. I think, I think there's a little Pharisee in each and every one of us. Don't you think? Shame on us. Responsibility leads to accountability. So that your prayers may not be hindered, which means impeded by one's course. You see, in the culture that I lived in, husbands really couldn't care less about having an intimate, loving relationship with their wives couldn't care less. Encouraging? Why should I encourage her? You know why? She's just, she is just there to have kids. That's all. So we can have a family. That's why I married. So she can keep house and make my food. But these believers who were the original readers of this text, they needed to learn this. Some of them are new, and they need to think biblically now, not according to their culture. Why? Because the culture didn't value women. That's why this was written. That's why it was written then for them, and that's why it is written for you now. 
This requires biblical thinking, biblical change. Why? Because if a man isn't doing this, God, let me just put it, God is not obligated to answer his prayers. And many blessings can be lost. Look at what David wrote in Psalm 66:18, if I have cherished, if I have cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. If a husband is not fulfilling his responsibilities to his wife, many blessings are lost. And you know what the problem is? Let me tell you the big problem. Let me close with this. Many men don't want to change. Many men don't want to look at their wives as someone who is precious and as their equal and treat them that way. May, may, may I be so bold as to say many Christian men still don't see it that way. And for that, I would label them a Pharisee. So, what am I trying to say here? Just as we are to be subject to, to our government, and just as you are to be subject to your masters, and just as the wives are to, are to be subject to their husbands, husbands, you are to be subject to your wives. Endearing them as someone who is precious, even though she is physically weaker than you. And treat her as that. Precious. Why? Because in God's sight, she is. And if you're not, your home is in trouble. Because God is not obligated to answer your prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this text. Lord, speak to each and every one of our hearts in a way that only you can. I ask for every man here, every young man, to think about these things. Somehow we've lost this in society, in my day and even now. Lord, once again your word speaks authoritatively to this issue. And I thank you for that. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. And I thank you for that. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. And I thank you for that.